What is shaking, Internet? This is Salts bringing you the How to Tank for Dummies Brewmaster Monk Guide. This guide is targeted at newer tanks that are just trying to learn how to be monks, and will cover the talents, abilities, and general playstyle of Brewmaster tanks. If you're looking for the very basics of tanking in general, click on the annotation in the video here to get a brief overview of all things tanking. If you're looking for how to tank specific dungeon or raid content, click on the annotation in the video here to access my specific guides. If you're looking for changes between Warlord tanking and Legion tanking, click the annotation in the video here to jump to the end of the video, where I'll cover the major changes between the two expansions. Now the Brewmaster Monks are a drunken kung fu masters of the battlefield, weaving between blows to take less damage through dodging. Brewmasters focus on dodging and staggering blows. Stagger is their unique mechanic, taking part of the damage from all attacks away immediately, and staggering that damage over a few seconds afterwards as a DOT. Now they generally take more damage than other tanks, but they take it in a smoother fashion. Monks work off of energy, similar to rogues. Moves are either energy consumers, or free, with a cooldown. Or sometimes both. You'll always start a fight with full energy, so this won't really be much of a problem. As I said, stagger is the main mechanic behind Brewmaster Monks. It's a relatively complicated mechanic if you dive in too deep, but the simple way to put it is that you take a percentage of damage away from all attacks immediately, and a percentage as a damage over time. Um, to be clear, stagger by itself doesn't actually reduce any damage, it just stretches it out over time. But we'll talk more about that when we get to our active mitigation moves. Additionally, as a passive move, Brewmasters spawn healing spheres by taking damage. These spheres are just hanging out around you, and if you walk near them, you'll be healed for a decent amount. These are important for tanking because you'll need to constantly move to grab these and keep your health up. We do have a move that can be used with these, which we'll discuss in just a bit. Now to start with, we're going to go ahead and discuss the different abilities you have as a Brewmaster. The basic moves you'll be, moving con you'll be using constantly are Keg Smash, Tiger Palm, Blackout Strike, and Breath of Fire. Keg Smash is your primary move and highest priority at all times. It does good damage to all nearby enemies and reduces their speed. Additionally, and more importantly to tanks, it reduces your active mitigation cooldowns uh, whenever you use it by 4 seconds. This is why you should always use this move on cooldown, as it's the best damage and adds a lot to your tankiness as well. The only problem is that it costs 40 energy, so you need to make sure you have enough energy to use it when it comes up on its 8 second cooldown. Tiger Palm is our fillerish move. It does damage to your target and also reduces your active mitigation cooldowns by 1 second. Not quite as effective, but still pretty good for tanking. Keg Smash and Tiger Palm are the only things you'll be using energy on. And since Keg Smash always takes priority, this isn't a big deal. Tiger Palm costs 25 energy, while Keg Smash costs 40. So as long as you always have enough energy to use Keg Smash as soon as it comes up, feel free to use Tiger Palm whenever you can. Blackout Strike is a generally boring move that does damage and has a 3 second cooldown. You should pretty much use this whenever it's available just to fill in gaps between other moves. Now it can be modified by talents, but we'll talk about that when we discuss those talents. Breath of Fire is a frontal cone attack that burns everything in front of you. If you're slowed by Keg Smash, or if they're slowed by Keg Smash, which pretty much should be everything at all times, it also burns them over the next 8 seconds. You should use this on cooldown to deal some additional damage. Now that pretty much covers your basic moves. Keg Smash is always your number one priority, and Tiger Palm should be your number two priority provided you have enough energy to Keg Smash when needed. Blackout Strike and Breath of Fire should just be used whenever available to fill in the time between attacks. Now let's talk Active Mitigation. I'm actually going to cover several moves here that may or may not count as Active Mitigation, but I feel this is the best time to discuss them. Now first up, we'll talk about a Fuse and Expel Harm. A Fuse is a single target, fast but small heal. Now you can't use this while actively tanking, but it's great for any time you're not actively tanking. It uses 30 energy, but it is pretty efficient. You should still you still should be able to keg smash as much as you want for that debuff and you know the damage, but this might be more useful than Tiger Palm. Expel Harm is a move that will suck in all of your healing spheres and damage an enemy for it. It's a little unreliable on the healing side, but for 15 energy to pull in all of your healing spheres, it's really not bad to keep at the ready. Use this whenever your health dips a little low to ensure you can get as much healing as you can. Now that those two healing moves are out of the way, let's talk real active mitigation. The, you have two main active mitigation moves, Iron Skin Brew and Purifying Brew, and they work together. Not only are they used to complement each other, they also share the same charge system. 
You can have three charges at any given time and get a new charge every 20 seconds or so, but both of them use those three charges. Now first, Iron Skin Brew increases your stagger percentage by 40% for six seconds. This is pretty good since you normally stagger around a third of your physical damage and a sixth of your ma magical damage, meaning you'll be staggering well over half of your damage when this move is active. Again though, this only spreads that damage out over the next 10 seconds, so you'll still be taking it eventually. Except for Purifying Brew. Using Purifying Brew clears half of all damage you're currently staggering. It's a lot of math, but pretend you took 1 million damage in one hit and staggered half of it. That means you'll be taking 500,000 damage immediately and 50,000 damage per second over the next 10 seconds. Pop Purifying Brew and boom, you're only taking 25,000 damage per second. Pop it again and you'll be down to 12,500. This is where you have to balance using Iron Skin to get that high stagger damage and Purifying Brew to clear half of it. It's a delicate balance, but the big rule of thumb is that if you're using Iron Skin, you had better save one of those charges for Purifying Brew afterwards, because without Purifying, you haven't reduced any damage. Also note that these moves are on like a 20 second cooldown. Normally this would be pretty bad because you wouldn't be able to get enough charges to, move your, to use your moves effectively. But because a ton of your moves actually reduce the cooldown of these moves, you should be getting more charges more often by going through your basic rotation. Now let's move on to the big cooldowns. Brewmasters have two main defensive cooldowns, Fortifying Brew and Zen Meditation. Fortifying Brew is your big move that increases your health, increases your stagger percentage, and reduces your damage taken all in one. It's a whopper of a cooldown with a whopper of a cooldown. You can only use it once every seven minutes. Now the saving grace here is that it is a brew, meaning all those moves that reduce your active mitigation by a few seconds like Cage Smash and Tiger Palm also actually reduce this cooldown by a few seconds every single time. Still, you probably won't be using it more often than like every five minutes at best, so don't expect much, too much out of it. Now Zen Meditation is an interesting move. It puts your character into a trance, reducing all damage taken by 60% for 8 seconds. That by itself sounds pretty amazing, but it actually gets cancelled by taking a melee hit, using an ability, or just moving. This has some amazing niche uses, like when a boss is pummeling you with magic spells over and over and over again. You can pop this and take way less damage for 8 seconds. But most of the time, you're just going to use it for a single big hit. It'll reduce that hit by 60% and then pop you out of the trance immediately. Now that covers our basic and general tranking moves, so let's go ahead and round up the other abilities available to you as a monk. Provoke is your standard taunt move to pull new adds or swap tanks. Speaking of basic moves, Spearhand Strike is your basic melee range interrupt to use on casters. Crackling Jade Lightning is what Emperor Palpatine uses at the end of the Return of the Jedi on Luke. Spoiler alert! It's a channeled move that will help when picking up adds since it causes a decent amount of threat, but you'll have to remain stationary while it shoots off. Paralysis is your single target CC move that can be used to CC an add for a minute at range. Now, I couldn't talk about monks without mentioning their mobility as well. Roll and Transcendence give some really cool options to your play. Roll is a dash in your current direction working on a separate charge system. Hopefully you used it while leveling because it's a lot of fun. Transcendence and Transcendence Transfer are moves that work together. Transcendence basically places a spirit of your character in your current location that stays there for 15 minutes. Transcendence Transfer is a move that will swap your character for this spirit, allowing you to teleport up to 40 yards away to your spirit instantly. Even better, after the 25 second cooldown, you can use it again to swap back. This is a really fun move that lets you do some very silly things. You can transfer pretty much anywhere, even through walls, as long as you don't go over that 40 yards away, yards away from your spirit. Now finally, you have Resuscitate, which is basic res move which to bring your dead allies back. You can't use it during a fight, but afterwards you can help out those little wimpy healers. Okay, now with abilities out of the way, we can start talking talents. Monks, like all other normal classes, get talents every 15 levels up to 90 and a fi final talent at level 100. At level 15, you unlock tier 1 talents, which include Chi Burst, an active heal, or an active ability that heals all friendly targets and damages all enemy targets in a huge cone in front of you, Eye of the Tiger, which adds a DOT for your Tiger Palm, and an HOT, that's heal over time to yourself when you use it, 
and Chi Wave, which is an ab active ability that jumps back and forth between a bunch of enemies and allies, healing and hurting enemies. Or healing allies and hurting enemies, whatever. Um, Eye of the Tiger is my pick here, because it's the best self-healing talent, and it's a passive bonus. Chi Burst technically has better overall healing potential for your group, but it has no personal benefit. While Chi Wave is generally suboptimal for healing to either of the others. Take Eye of the Tiger unless you want to try and maximize Chi Burst's potential, and avoid Chi Wave. Tier 2 talents open at level 30 and unlock Chi Torpedo, which replaces your roll with an even longer roll that also gives you a little speed boost. Tiger's Lust, which is an ability, active ability that gives your target a speed boost and you can use on yourself as well. And Celerity, which gives your char you three charges on roll instead of just two and makes its cooldown uh, a little bit lower. Now, none of these specifically matter for tanking, so it's really totally up to you. I personally go with Celerity, unless a fight has a specific use for the other two, just for the ease of rolling around more often, but it's totally personal preference. Now, level 45 unlocks Tier 3 talents, including Light Brewing, which reduces the cooldown on your primary active mitigation by 3 seconds and increases the charges by 1, Black Ox Brew, which is an active that immediately gives you full charges of brews and refills your energy, and Gift of the Mists, which makes more health orbs spawn when your health is lower. Now, to be honest here, my personal favorite is Light Brewing, because it's passive, and it directly helps your tanking quite a bit. But the numbers show that Black Ox Brew is better because it also f refills your energy on top of refilling all of the charges. Uh, the energy can then be used on Keg Smash and Tiger Palm, uh, which lower your cooldown even more with the light than light brewing in the long run. Also, Black Ox Brew counts as a brew itself, so its cooldown will be decreased by Cage Smash and Tiger Palm as well, making it really just too good to pass up, unfortunately. Gift of the Mist is the best self-heal, but doesn't really benefit your mitigation, so your direct tankiness doesn't go up, just your sustain. Uh, it's only useful in magic fights where your brews aren't really as effective. So for recommendations, I'd say beginners should be using Light Brewing, but you really should get used to t using Black Ox Brew because it's the best talent overall. Now, Tier 4 talents are unlocked at level 60 and include Ring of Peace, which places an area on the ground that boots uh, any enemies in it out when they attack, Summon Black Ox Statue, which places a statue on the ground that passively taunts nearby enemies, not a hard taunt, just a little bit of like bonus threat, and Leg Sweep, which stuns all nearby enemies around you for 5 seconds. Now, in most fights, none of these really matter, so you can pick whichever you want. Leg Sweep is kind of my go-to for a nice AoE stun, although Summon Black Ox Statue can actually be pretty nice if you taunt the statue, because it will do a hard taunt on all nearby enemies for you, so it acts like an AoE taunt. Still, none of them are truly game-changing for Brewmasters, so pick which whichever you like. Now you'll unlock Tier 5 talents at level 75, including Healing Elixir, which is just an active ability on charges that heals you for 15% of your maximum health, Diffuse Magic, which is a cooldown that deflects magic debuffs and reduces magic damage by 60%, and Dampen Harm, which is a cooldown that reduces damage for any decently hard-hitting attacks by 30% for a few hits. <clears throat> Personally, Healing Elixir is my favorite here, because not only is it pretty decent self-healing, it actually has a passive automatic use when you're at low health. Uh, Diffuse Magic definitely works better on heavy magic fights, but Healing Elixir is generally stronger in most counters most encounters. Tier 6 talents open at level 90 and unlock Rushing Jade Wind, which is an active that does damage to all nearby enemies for a few seconds. Invoke Njiao. Njiao? Man, my cat is going crazy in the background. Njiao with a black ox, which lets you summon a pet ox that taunts and attacks enemies. And Special Delivery, which adds a chance for your mitigation bruise to toss a keg, which damages enemies and reduces their movement, similar to what Keg Smash actually already does. Um, special Delivery is probably best here, simply because it's passive. None of these add any survivability since the Pet Ox can't actually taunt bosses. So, since Special Delivery is passive and the best damage in the, in the tier, it's pretty much the best choice in this tier. Uh, now, the final talent opens at level 100. This tier includes Elusive Dance, which causes Purifying Brew to clear bonus stagger damage and add dodge chance. Blackout Combo, which gives your Blackout Strike bonus interactions with your other moves and High Tolerance, which increases your basic stagger percentage by 10% and gives you bonus haste. So, to be clear, all of these are really passive, so it's like a field day for me. Each of these talents have their merits. High Tolerance lowers your damage spikes and gives you more bruise through haste, while Elusive Dance gives you less damage overall but more spiky damage without your bruise up. 
However, Blackout Combo is likely the best in the tier because it not only makes Blackout Strike more important, and it actually do it does something besides a little bit of damage, it also gives you a wide variety of buffs to use. The only problem I have with recommending it is that you really do need to learn what moves to do, or what moves do what in conjunction with Blackout Strike. Basically, after you use your Blackout Strike, the next move you use will get a bonus feature. Triple damage on Tiger Palm, lower cooldown on Breath of Fire, bonus brew cooldown reduction on Keg Smash, delay of stagger damage on Iron Skin Brew, and a free dodge chance on Purifying Brew. Now the real reason it's pretty good is that even if you're not tanking or not, uh, not taking lots of damage, you can use it in conjunction with Tiger Palm or Breath of Fire to do a bunch of bonus damage, making it extremely versatile. There's really not a bad way to use it, but there's a lot of room for mastery, so you'll have to play with it for a while before you really feel comfortable using it. And that's all I have to say about that. So go ahead and recap talents. I suggest Eye of the Tiger, Celerity, or really any Tier 2 talent, Light Brewing for newer tanks, and Blackout Brew for experienced tanks, Leg Sweep, or really any Tier 4 talent, Healing Elixir, Special Delivery, probably, and maybe Blackout Combo. Finally, we're going to go ahead and discuss stats. Agility and Stamina will be on all of your leather gear, but you'll also want to look out for some a few specific secondary stats. Specifically Haste, Critical Strike, Mastery, and Versatility. Now, Haste is first and foremost because it increases your energy generation, as well as lowering your cooldowns on most attacks. This will dire directly lead to more survivability through more brews. Mastery is something I didn't talk about, but you don't have to think about too much because you really can't control. Simply put, it makes it easier and easier to dodge every time that you don't dodge until you do dodge. Actually, that doesn't sound simple at all. Um, basically, you get a stack every time you're hit, or don't dodge an attack. Each stack increases your dodge chance until eventually you have a 100% chance to dodge. Then, the next dodge you make clears your stacks and the cycle repeats. Um, Critical Strike will help you thanks to a passive called Celestial Fortune, which gives you a chance to get bonus healing equal to your crit strike chance from all sources. Versatility just increases your damage, healing, and decreases damage, of damage taken. It's pretty much just a good all-around stat to have. Now, those are the stats that you want in that order. Haste, Mastery, Crit Strike, and Versatility. Technically, Haste eventually drops off in use, but I wouldn't worry about that too much. The rest of the secondary stats won't matter as much, so you really kind of just want to focus on these four. Now, that just covers about everything. So, you're ready to go out and get drunk on tanking. If you'd like to see specific dungeon guides, click on the annotation in the video now to see more Legion guides. Otherwise, listen on as we discuss the differences between Legion and Draenor tanking. So the first thing you might notice is the disappearance of Chi. One less resource you have to deal with, I guess. Along with that, the biggest change is the removal of Shuffle. No longer does Blackout Strike, aka our new Blackout Kick, do anything for our active mitigation, and now you just stagger a bunch by default. A lot of our moves have changed or been removed. We now have Iron Skin Brew for active mitigation that acts similar to Shuffle by increasing our stagger a lot, but it's on a charge system, and it shares those charges with Purifying Brew. Purifying Brew works on charges too since Chi is gone, so now you might have to be a bit more selective when actually using it. Additionally, Guard has been removed, so our core abilities are kind of dwindling. You'll notice that Fortifying Brew has a huge cooldown now, but it is reduced by using our basic moves. Elusive Brew is also gone, in case you were looking for that one. Uh, Dizzying Haze, our keg-throwing move, is also gone as well, sadly. Expel Harm is not part of the main rotation anymore, since Chi isn't a big thing. Uh, now it pulls all our healing spheres into us, making us almost like a mini cooldown for healing. Now I think that covers all the high points, although there are probably more changes thanks to the loss of Chi and Shuffle. Overall, I think the char changes are kind of wishy really wishy-washy, actually. Some of them were really good, and some of them were really terrible. I hate, 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 hate the new mastery. It's totally random when you'll be dodging now. The charge system of, like, the brews and coming back every couple, you know, bonus cooldowns, stuff, stuff like that, that's kind of a nice change from most tanks, and I think it really does have some merits. Uh, removing Chi was probably for the best, although now it feels like some of our moves are literally just fluff, a.k.a. Blackout Strike without that Tier 7 talent. Regardless, I feel that monks are in a good place and have a very unique playstyle like they always have. 
I think they'll be just fine as we move into the expansion, and I'm excited to see how better gear and more mastery can shake out the class. Hopefully you like this guide for dummies. Please like, favorite, share, subscribe, all that jazz, and as always, you keep it saltsy, internet.